empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Water can flow and water can crash. You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Be water, my friend. Bruce Lee died 51 years as of recording this video, and he's a big idol of mine. Lots of people see him as this big kind of actor and this martial artist that kind of put forth these ideas that kind of changed how we make and create movies and also how we use martial arts in the modern era. But not many people know him for his philosophy and that's what I really love him for. And before I say this, I just want to repeat that, you know, Bruce Lee is a human being. He's not perfect. You know, there's lots of rumours and things about him. You know, he was a bit of a ladies' man. He could be quite rash and aggressive. But this was also the 60s and 70s, so these things were kind of more common. And in his time, you know, thing, being Chinese was a big deal. You know, it wasn't really accepted. But he was actually born in America. And his mother was also a descendant of European. She was Euro-Asian. Euro and so he was never quite accepted in China or in America. And so this kind of helped him to kind of see things from both sides of the view. You know, he wasn't quite accepted being at home in China or where he was born in San Francisco in America. And what I love about him is that he brought these philosophies of the East and the West. You know, a lot of Western philosophy is kind of, um, it's very rigid, it's very do things and that kind of thing, whereas the East it's more fluid, it's more in align with nature, and it's, you know, you kind of think of these monks that just spend all day kind of sitting and meditating. And he brought both of them together in this beautiful kind of package, which is seen in his movies and in his few interviews and the books that he's left behind from his writings. So he was, a, not only was he a kind of a philosopher, but he was an actor and a martial artist. And the middle way is, it's not on the extremes, it's, it's the natural way. It's not being so robotic and logical and it's not being so emotional and sensitive. It's kind of this middle course way that's in between. And he always kind of walked this path and his own path and he knew where he wanted to go. And he could be quite boastful and, you know, very confident in himself, which is, of course, because he'd spent so much time in martial arts and that was something important to him, being um, accepted by people around him. And one of the things I love that he says is when people ask, hey, Bruce, are you good? He said, if I say that I'm good, you will think that I'm boasting. But if I say that I'm bad, then you think that I'm lying. And that's such a great way to kind of divert the question rather than say, oh, I'm good or oh, I am bad. It's like I'm both and neither. And this is kind of the, the Eastern philosophy that's coming in, you know, this idea that there's everything and nothing, and there's only kind of one reality. And this is kind of what he talks about when he says, be water, you know, be fluid. Don't be attached to styles, set routines, set ways, set limitations and conditioning, which is a lot of the Western kind of philosophy, as we see in a lot of in our society and our education system these days. But one of the things that he says that he had as one of his labels for his Kung Fu, um, not Kung Fu, his Jeet Kune Do um, teachings was no limitations as limitation, no way as the way. And this was all about having the beginner's mindset and being open to things rather than being set and rigid in your own way. Because anyone can follow the set schedule, everyone, anyone can follow a set routine, anyone can learn this kind of thing and do it perfectly. But to truly express yourself and to learn and understand yourself and express yourself to its truest form is something that takes a lifetime to learn. And nobody can be you, nobody can copy that, nobody can replicate that because that's all you and your experiences, your karma, your every, all those sorts of things. And he was really determined to have skill and mastery over the martial arts. And one of the things that he kind of found going through this was originally he wanted it for his ego, you know, to be cool, to be able to protect himself, you know, to be able to do these, all these flashy kicks and become one of the best. But as he went on, he started to find that it became too rigid for him. And as he started to learn more about philosophy, when he came back to America, he started being opening, open up to all these kind of ideas that was kind of in the underlying culture of the Chinese, but 
you know, he got taught this a bit more and understood it more from studying it at uni. And so he never actually went into much competitions or anything. He just went and taught people martial arts. And through this, he helped them understand themselves and um, build confidence and trust in themselves. And that's the importance of having mastery. That's the importance of having mastery over a skill or of doing the repetitions, doing something over and over and over again until it comes instinctually like that, you know. And this builds a sense of confidence, you know, because you have proof to back up. You're not just talking, talking crap, you know, spitting wind, you know, you're not just saying, oh, I'm really good. You're actually backing it up. But he wouldn't even say he was good, as I said before. He said, yeah, he said that kind of quote, which was really kind of tricky and cheeky and clever. And another part of confidence is being secure in yourself. And being secure in yourself means you're able to pick and choose your own path, your own life that you want to pursue that means something to you and you're able to express yourself truly in the moment because you're not weighed down by these expectations by trying to please other people by thinking that you have to be or do something or you have to get a certain job and these kind of things that can really weigh us down and are becoming really prevalent in the western culture and lots of people are burning out or they're just kind of checking out of life because they don't want to live this life but they haven't built up the security in themselves and the confidence to go out and start doing things that that's that's a whole topic for another video so another thing that bruce lee talks about that i really love is just having pride in your work doing something well and wanting to give a really good product to other people well, he wasn't just a dreamer he was like an also an action taker you know he had these big grand plans but then he'd go and take action on them and another thing that he says is if you're going to actually do it, do it, do the thing. Don't try it. Don't half ass it. Do the thing. And another thing that I like or a quote that suits this really well is from Mark Manson. If it's not a fuck yes, it's a no. And this means like if you're kind of like, oh, maybe I should do this or like someone asks you to do something and you're like, yeah, I might, I might go with you. I might go do that. And that, that doesn't actually mean much to you because you're kind of half saying yes, you don't actually really want to. If it's not a fuck yes, then you don't actually want to do that. It doesn't mean something to you. And if you're going to live your life with all these half yeses, you're going to be pulled in all these different directions by all these different people. I myself find this all the time because I tend to be more of a people pleaser and I like to look at external circumstances and kind of see how I could fit into that rather than doing what I actually want to do, which is very important. <laughs> Another thing that I liked was even though he was very famous, you know, he had this big rise to fame and everybody kind of loved him and he got rushed and mobbed by people all the time. He, when asked if um, he, he was a star or what he thought about being a star, he said, you know what, the term star really turns me off. You know why? Because it's an illusion by all these people putting onto him saying that he's a star. And he said that if somebody had called him a star actor, he would be very impressed and chuffed with that. But the, the idea of someone being a star is this illusion. And this is kind of what he, he, he's, he does. He's always questioning to the source. He's very curious and he wants to pin down to the truth of kind of things because it's very easy. There's all these masks and appearances in the world and all these kind of social niceties and all these kind of things that don't really matter, you know, nations, styles. He said he didn't want to continue Kung, Kung Fu or Wing Chun because it was a limited style. And unless somebody has three arms and three legs, then you don't need a new style. There's only one style of fighting and that's, that's with your body. And he was always about tr expressing yourself truly and understanding yourself, seeing through unclouded eyes and always self-examining yourself to become self-actualized. Not this image, not this kind of fitting in, playing this part, but to actually be and learn about yourself because that's one of the most important things in life. And to end, my, one of my favorite things that he says is, after he talks about being a star and that he thinks that's an illusion, he says, well, I don't want to say it sound like it, but as Confucius say, under the heaven, under the sky, there is but one family. And 
he, he also said, you know how I like to think of myself as a human being? And that's very profound because people would say, when he was asked by Pierre Burton in, his, in the interview, he was like, oh, so are you going to go to the East and become famous in China or are you going to go to the West and be famous in America? You know, what, what pulls you more, you know, being born in America or your Chinese heritage? And he was like, well, I've already decided to do both because... You know, I'm neither of these things. It doesn't really matter. You know, America's different, China's different, but at the end of the day, we're all human beings. So thank you for watching. I really wanted to share just these ideas from Bruce Lee because I think they're invaluable. And even though it was 51 years ago, they held, they held such strong value even now. You know, it's very important to be and express yourself, especially in our times, because we're starting to lose that. We're starting to lose that behind the social, the mask of social media and just wanting to fit in and all these kind of crazes and these news and drama and all these sorts of things. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.